Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm here to talk about two very concerning incidents in the Adelaide CBD overnight. Uh, firstly, I want to reassure the community that police are taking antisocial behaviour seriously and we are continuing to utilise the powers that are given to us under the declared public precinct that operates within the city and that's to ensure public and retailer safety. Police are applying a zero tolerance high enforcement approach throughout the area and that includes specifically North Terrace and Rundle Mall, and especially when it comes to those carrying weapons. The declared public precinct powers allow us to use metal detectors when we suspect a weapon is being carried, and we're also conducting high visibility patrolling and targeting offenders that are known and to create antisocial behaviour. This dedicated and coordinated approach will be closely monitored with police adjusting our tactics and resourcing as necessary. If I go into the specific details of the two incidents overnight, uh, firstly at about 6.10pm last night, police received reports of a group of youths fighting in the Rundle Mall near the intersection with King William Street. From vision of the incident, it would appear there were two groups fighting with three youths in each of those two groups, making a total of six uh, involved in the affray. The information we further received was that uh, one person in each of those groups was in possession of a machete. Police have attended promptly and have subsequently located one group of those three youths nearby and have arrested a 17-year-old youth from Adelaide for aggravated affray, a 15-year-old from Semaphore Park for aggravated affray and a 14-year-old from Blakeview for aggravated affray and carry offences weapon. It will be further alleged that the 14-year-old was in possession of a machete that, uh, as I said, we will allege was used in the earlier affray. The 17-year-old youth has been refused bail and will appear in the Adelaide Youth Court today. And the other youths were bailed with strict conditions to appear in the Youth Court on the 18th of December. The 17-year-old youth has a strong affiliation with a known street youth gang. And the other two youth are considered associates of that gang. The police are still looking for the other three youths that were involved in this affray. And at this stage, we have some positive lines of inquiry. And at this time, what I can say is the cause of the conflict is unknown, uh, but I have spoken previously about conflict and tension that is occurring between youth street gangs across Adelaide. In the second incident, at 4.09 a.m. this morning, police were called to the North Terrace area regarding reports of a man with an axe at the front of Sky City Casino. Police attended and located the man in the Adelaide railway station, who we will allege was in possession of an axe. Police had to use tactical options um, to challenge that man, and he subsequently dropped the axe and was arrested. There were no injuries to police or person or the person holding the axe, and there were no known injuries to any member of the public. The man was arrested for carrying offensive weapon and afraid, and has been bailed. This man is a 26-year-old from the Northern Territory who also has ties to Adelaide. And he has been bailed to appear in Adelaide Magistrates Court next year. Happy to take any questions. In terms of the, the first instances, um, we understand that one of the 17-year-olds uh, had recently been arrested and um, charged with firearms offences and was on an electronic monitoring. Um, why was he still in the community? Do you think we're doing enough there? Oh, absolutely, we're doing enough. I'd, I'd have to check the details of his bail conditions. Um, he is the one that's been refused bail uh, and will be making submissions um, to obviously keep him in custody. The circumstances of his previous offending with regard to the specific detail of whether he's on electronic monitoring, I don't have at this stage. But uh, are we doing enough? Absolutely, we're doing enough. You're not aware whether he's cut off his bracelet or anything like that? I've got no information that would suggest he's breached any electronic monitoring conditions. So, um, as I said, I'd have to further detail. Yeah. Yep. Do you believe, sorry, do you believe the, the gang issue here is escalating? Oh, in so much as escalating, we know the tension exists all the time. When these two groups come together is a bit of an unknown. We have periods of what I'd say is relatively quiet and we don't see that very overt tension and particularly what causes us concern is when it's in a very private place like Rumble Mall. Now, 
when that tension becomes heightened, which is something that we try and monitor very closely with our intelligence, and we do know that there are factors that influence when things may happen, um, but in terms of escalating, um, difficult to say, but absolutely I would say the tension exists all the time. And how concerning is it that someone would bring something like Nishiji into London Hall? Oh, it's incredibly concerning. I think that the complete disregard for public safety is uh, something that's extremely concerning. I mean, it's one thing to come together with another group of people you're having a conflict with, but it's another level to have that in an extremely public place like London Mall, which then exposes the community to a massive risk of uh, their own safety. Do you believe the two groups are rival gangs? We believe so, yes. Uh, we certainly have information that there is an evolving nature to these groups. Um, when we talk about our Operation Mel investigations, um, we were basing those perhaps around the, very much around the criminality, but there was a, an ethnicity that was attached to that. The evolution of these groups would see that no longer is it just one particular group of people. Um, they are expanding their uh, involvement, and that's something, again, we're very conscious about, which does complicate um, the difficulty in responding to these types of uh, matters when and where they may occur. So we have a lot of enforcement activity that goes on in the background. We have six weapons prohibition orders that apply to youth within our Operation Merwood Investigation Unit. And those applications were made on the basis of the authority that gives us uh, the ability to make an order under that regard. So again, those weapons prohibition orders are enforced regularly. Um, that allows us to do certain activity. But uh, again, the, the tension and conflict that exists is, is very concerning. Is there a crossover with Operation Mandrake? Um, a crossover in so much as our investigators um, work together there, but I would say in terms of the level of criminality, they are two quite distinct groups of uh, youth and, and young adults uh, in so much as we may see them come together in certain circumstances, but there's no conflict that we would say that operates between the investigations we run under Operation Mandrake and those we run under Operation Mel. There was two very clear rival gangs in the beginning of Operation Mel. Would you say it's those two that still exist, or is there more? There are sort of offshoot street gangs, um, and it's more about an identity. They, they um, I guess, gathering groups around a particular identity. So we still have the two main groups, but they're also what we'd say just associate type names that um, form the basis of what youth gangs do to, to have an identity. You said that um, if there was one person in each group in possession of a machete, yes. so that effectively means that the other, the other group, they're still at large. Um, how concerned are you about that, that there's still someone running around with a machete? Oh, absolutely concerned. I mean, the propensity for violence with these groups, uh, as we've seen historically, is there. And we have some positive lines of inquiry, and there are significant resources being deployed <laughs> to effectively find that second group that we say at this stage is not um, has not been apprehended by the police, but we have some very good lines of inquiry. You said that there are factors that influence when things might happen. Are you aware of any particular factor that influenced the flare-up on Run in Randall Mall last night? Not last night, no. No, that will form part of the investigation. Um, and whether it is directly related to the conflict that we have spoken about previously, or it's separate to that, um, again, will form the basis of the investigation. Do these um, gangs have names? And can you tell me their names? Uh, we've said previously the primary ones are 051 and KBS, and KBS is a, an acronym for Killer Block Squad. Um, and that, they're the two primary um, youth street gangs that we've said have existed for some time. And do they come from certain areas of Adelaide or are they sort of expanded right across? Uh, we do know there's a predominant um, geographic location around the western, northwestern, and northern suburbs. That would be the primary concentration, but as I said, there, there is some evolution to these gangs that no longer perhaps do they associate by uh, an ethnicity. There was some bio questions. There was another name for one of the gangs, West Side or West Twenty Two. Are they part of, of this Operation Mel investigation? 
the the whole youth street gang um, sort of persona is all part of um, what we'd say is whether it's Operation Mandrake or it's Operation Melbourne in terms of the operation of youth street gangs. Sometimes very difficult to um, provide that level of detail that would say that name is associated with a gang. Um, the primary ones we talk about are the ones I've, I've just mentioned, um, but that's not to say there's not offshoots from that or just a name that emerges without any real foundation as to why that name exists. I know many years ago, um, a long time ago, um, there were sort of street gangs in Adelaide and there were concerns that bikey gangs were kind of starting to enlist them and bring them into the fray. Are there any concerns around that with these particular gangs? It's always something from an intelligence point of view we monitor. Um, people that feed into um, OMCGs is something from an intelligence point of view we're considerably looking at. Um, the reason for why we do what we do is based around the criminality. Um, and that's the primary driver of our efforts towards whether it's Operation Mandrake, it's Operation Mel, or any other activity we do. But the criminality is what we're pursuing. Um, the reason or the, the ethnicity that attached to the gang sometimes is a secondary factor. Um, but certainly what we're focusing here very strongly is on the criminality. Can I ask you some questions about pageant? Yeah, pageant. Sure. Um, sure. Because of the concern around major public events, we have a significant police presence there, and um, has there been a request for people not to camp out? Um, it, it, we do advise people to, I guess, be very conscious about camping on roads prior, because there are road closures in place. It does expose them to an element of risk uh, in terms of camping out, uh, and also there are factors that operate within the pageant, and the, the blue on the line been something that's been in place for a number of years so whilst we would say is we prefer that people don't camp on roads because as I said that element of risk is absolutely there and um, there's a time when the pageant starts to form and um, and we will have a very strong presence at the pageant as we always do uh, and we ask people to um, listen to what the police are advising them to do. What do you think would be sort of a safe time to, to arrive or, or start to clear the spot? Oh, I think that's a difficult one for me to make the call on that one. Um, I mean, people make their own determinations about what time, but certainly it's it's obvious when the police are starting to form and um, the pageant itself is, is forming. But the decisions people make, they really need to have an element of their own safety um, and I encourage people not to do anything that would make them vulnerable. And just lastly, there was a truck crash overnight um, when the stable pole uh, affected a major intersection. Yes. Are we investigating the truck driver there? Why did he not stay around at the scene? Uh, why he didn't stay at the scene is something we will know when we find him. Um, again, we have some very positive lines of inquiry on the registration number of the truck. And at this stage, there are um, a significant number of inquiries that have been made or being made uh, to locate the truck and the driver. What's your message to him if he's watching this? Oh, I think um, eventually we will catch up with him. I would encourage him to, well, I'm saying him, I would encourage the driver uh, to come forward uh, and declare themselves to police because we will find them eventually. Uh, and the damage that was caused was significant and they can then explain their actions as to why they chose not to stop. Thanks, Sarah. Can I just ask quickly, um, how much CCTV footage are you able to access to sort of um, investigate the two gangs? Um, yeah, is there like a lot of footage from Rundle Mall? We have a very good coverage through Rundle Mall, uh, through a network that operates in conjunction with the City of Adelaide, and that network is monitored through our police security services area. Uh, so we'll be gathering that footage plus any other footage that may exist, and that will form part of the investigation. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.